Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. Whenever I see three digits reminiscent of one of Roland's vintage TRs or TBs, my synth nerd lizard brain starts drooling like a Pavlovian dog. No matter if it's a rare 60s sports car, the clock or some janky dance music FX box contraption. Speaking of which, today we are going to talk about the Roland EF303. This FX unit it created with DJs and electronic musicians in mind is one of the rarer and more mysterious late 90s early zero years groove tools our favorite music tech manufacturer brought to the market. One might think that slapping the sacred 303 moniker on a DJ effect is a bit misleading, but in defense of Roland, there's more than first meets the eye. At the first glance, the EF303 is tricking all the Zoxes. A glorious one fader per step sequencer dominating the front panel, MC303 like knobs just asking to be tweaked and many flashy buttons. The unit offers 13 effects programs, bread and butter filter and EQ, classic Roland Lo-Fi, a ring modulator, nice modulation and, and delay, delay FX, sounds you would expect from a vocoder, pitch delay, a groovy slicer, and a seemingly basic compressor and reverb. All these processing options have a very digital late 90s vibe to them and would be nothing to call home about if it wasn't for the aforementioned 16-step sequencer. It can be used for modulating one of the two main parameters or the effect balance of every program. You can reduce the pattern length, set it to loop, one shot or step by step. I really appreciate the five direction modes including random, and the stepping can be smoothed out. More often than not, there's some kind of LFO or other timing-based magic going on that can be synced to the master tempo and dialed in using note values. Nice! The impact of the frequency range parameter differs greatly from program to program, but usually affects, you guessed it, the frequency range the effect is applied to. Okay, that's all very groovy, but how's the synth section? To be honest, a bit underwhelming. Sure, the sequencer works great for 303-ish musical motifs. You can set scales, limit the range of the faders, choose non-16th time divisions and dial in slides, rests, and the note length. Still, the two mono synth patches and the drum section are very limited. Both synths can only be tweaked using cutoff and resonance and the main difference is the addition of a delay or distortion effect. However, further parameters are accessible using MIDI. The drum section comes with four kits consisting of four sounds each. The EF303 reluctantly accepts MIDI clock and the clock it provides is all over the place. MIDI implementation is better than expected, which is a good thing because two of the four main encoders on my unit are broken in such a perfidious way that it took me half a day to figure out that it wasn't my fault. I used external MIDI controllers in the jams which worked perfectly. Keep in mind that you won't be able to seamlessly switch from one program to the other. And sequencer timing is often messed up in the process. 
There's a built-in phono preamp, a microphone input and it wouldn't make sense to complain about the RCA connectors. Being able to preview FX settings on your headphones is a nice touch. It took me a little longer to find an EF303 in my area without having to sell any vital organs. The EF303 is based on an interesting concept and offers many great features, especially given the time it was released. Did Roland mess it up in the execution? You have already heard the drum and synth section in today's intro tune. Yes, you can hide the almost ridiculous amount of filter stepping in a cloud of reverb and delay. Let's go back to square one and use it as an effect unit. That's a nice collection of old school DJFX. Not being able to switch from one program to the other without any hiccups is a limitation and it took me a few takes to keep the EF303 in time for the entire jam. But there are certainly users for sounds like these. I'm really looking forward to hearing one of the monosynth programs in action. <laughs> When you absolutely positively got to traumatize every person on the dance floor, except no substitutes. That's a wild take on the acid monosynth topic, but I actually like it. The effects and sounds of the EF303 are as late 90s as it gets. Let's push it as far as possible in this beefed up retro goa side trance. Yes, it's corny, but I honestly don't know what else to do with it. Maybe some super dirty acid techno, but I did that in the MC09 episode, which you should totally watch. I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, random late 90s drug music. EF303 is one of the pieces of gear many 90s kids like me have lusted over when flicking through old school music tech magazines back in the day. Synced up FX, hands-on controls, it perfectly fits almost every existing setup and drum and synth sounds as the cherry on top. That was quite a promise and Roland did a respectable job at keeping it. Well, mostly. There are timing issues, the sounds, especially the drums are limited and the broken knobs on my otherwise mint looking unit are not exactly inspiring confidence in the overall build quality. It can be assumed that it's only a matter of time until we will see the release of a boutique EF03. Original fire engine paint job, all IOs downgraded to mini jacks and I've heard people really like 10mm ultra short throw faders. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show. 